can hear us here. Hey, you can hear me here. I'm stuck in this ear. Or we could do the whole, I'm moving from one side to the other. So um, we, well, that's not going to work, Father. You're just going to sound like you're coming from one ear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to sound like I'm coming from one ear unless I like raise my voice that much. In which case, you're going to blow out the person's left ear. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't. Which want one's the one that breaks a lot with earphones? Was it the right earphone and left earphone? Like one that generally no dies. For me, it's the. It, for me, it's the left earphone. Actually, how do you know if it's left or right? I mean, where's the imaginary head looking? Is he staring right at you, Joe? Or are we staring? At, is he like staring out into the uh, so open whose world? perspective are we using? Your perspective or the perspective of the person staring at us right over there? There's no the person, person staring. staring at us right over there. Dude, that's scary. Um, it, it depends on like where we pan the uh, where we pan each track. So if you have one of those awesome head fe- headphones, ooh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like one of them. Like <laughs> that's gonna have like no effect, right? Because like this mic is the left ear, this mic is the right ear. So. <laughs> But arc, yeah, arc, arc, so right. special right. sound edition. If you are listening to this right now on your computer with normal speakers, uh, I suggest putting on headsets, earphones, any sort sorry, of sorry. Uh, or tar- ears. That or that or start making your your speakers like replicate some form of dual channel thing. Yeah, um, the reason we're doing this outdoors is that way I can hear while editing if that motorcycle sounds like it's moving to the right. What's that thing that... What's that thing that... that, that, uh... And that car going from left to right. Okay. What's that scientific principle? Doppler effect. And Doppler effect. Yeah. Doppler Doppler effect. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, was that, wow, Sh- wow. Right? that was Sheldon's like, costume in the Big Bang Theory. I have no idea. Well, like the Halloween episode. What are you? I'm the Dupler effect. Just tell people you're a zebra. Because it's just like black and white stripes. <laughs> I, I was amusing. never a big fan of that show, so I really wouldn't know. Anyway. Uh, well, I watched it just because it was there. It's like, eh, why not? Then, you know, YouTube ate up my life and I realized I could get far more into content on demand. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, let's see if that car sounds like it's moving from left to right. Is it? And that motorcycle from right to left. Is it? <laughs> I, I was also thinking that when you go to Manila, like this is how you do the audio for any potential like let's plays that you have with the boys in Seren. Okay. Plug, plug. So what do you think of like uh, having the Elgato attached to a spectator computer? Yeah, that's gonna make for the easiest edit. Yeah. Because you just have to worry about one video track. Yep, one. Yeah, it's just one thing. Like, just one video. Track. <laughs> Once we sync it, and we just can't cut. Oh, that's one thing though. I'm so. No- uh, I told Paolo about this. I recently upgraded my Mavericks to Yosemite. <laughs> Worst choice I've ever made. <laughs> Why? Uh, so much of my software doesn't work anymore. I'll have to even more than Final Cut. Apparently, yeah, because I've been slowly. Oh, Final Cut's not working. Like, <laughs> you cannot use this. Like, are you kidding me? Now That's the thing terrible. is, do you have to yeah. buy the update? I already paid for it. I mean, I I own Final Cut. Oh, <laughs> I own okay. the Final Cut software. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't pirate any of my no. <laughs> editing software. Uh, no, I mean. But the funny thing is, it okay. says, "Oh, go on this app. Go to the App Store to get your free update." It just says purchase. I click purchase. You already have this installed. Like, oh my god, what do I do now? <laughs> so right um, now I'm just looking for like a weird fix to make it work again. Yeah. Okay. Or I'm going to have to edit on the MacBook Air and. Uh, no, no, yeah. don't, don't. I've do tried that. that, you know, during school. Yeah, how was it? Many Macs and many Lenovo's, uh, Asus computers died during that semester. <laughs> was that the same? Was that the same sem where someone tried to overclock a Lenovo? Yes, mm. but for completely different reasons. <laughs> why did, like, why did he try it again to play Borderlands One? Nah, Korean playing StarCraft. How <laughs> many extra frames <laughs> per second did he need? Did he just need four extra? StarCraft Two. How many for ex- again? How many extra frames per second? Did I don't he know. Need? What does frame Dude. per second matter for RTS? Yes, of course. Really. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but why? Technically, you could just do- drop everything to low so that you can at least get sixty. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. You need the frames per second because, like, you have to be. Yeah. You know. So why overclock it when you can just drop everything to low? 
you're asking a you know a very big fan, a very big Korean fan, of StarCraft to All right, to play see. StarCraft at low. Right, he, like the same I'm guy. I'm sure it's against the law somewhere there. <laughs> like the same, he, he bought though. StarCraft Two. He like he bought he pre-ordered StarCraft Two in a trance. Oh yeah, that was that was a that's a really good story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like one day he was just like, oh my god, I got my pre-order of StarCraft Two. <laughs> Like I pre-ordered StarCraft 2. He did realize. He says, remember, that he walked into a uh, into the store, kind of walked around, and apparently, he just ordered it. Uh, he yeah. doesn't know. Like, yeah. we're, not, we're not being racist or anything, but like, nope. that's only a racial trait. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my theory was I told them was, I'm pretty sure he's buy from that store. So he just kind of figured, hey, he probably wants StarCraft. He should just pre-order it for him. He'll accept it. <laughs> because he looked Korean. <laughs> that's terrible. That's terrible, yes. but he, when, he, when he got it, he was so, so happy. <laughs> Yes, yeah, and surprised that that receipt was in his wallet. Yeah, actually, he found it in his wallet. Like, I paid for a pre-order like, for StarCraft 2. What? When did this happen? Like, what? That like, is why. I was like, like, asking, where'd you go there? Oh, I went there. You no, know, I need to. Pay. I want to pick up some new games and things. And I don't remember doing anything beyond that. Dude, we should get him on the show. Oh yeah, we should. I think he has his own YouTube stuff and podcast stuff also. Yeah, so we should totally get him on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe try to And he get... can tell us the stories of how it happened. Yes. <laughs> Among other strange things that has occurred to him. Yes. Uh. <laughs> but oh, yeah. let's do that weird thing. Do doing like a weird thing with that. He's like, yes. Yes. How <laughs> was the reason we can't always have a face cam? <laughs> Does it sound like I'm whispering in your ear? <laughs> Is it creepy? Why do you think that is such a problem? It's not I'm like sorry. I'm going to eat you in the most delectable of ways. Guys, we're sorry that we don't have pop filters. And there's I, a reason why we don't have face cam at this point. We do apologize. <laughs> we're making out with our microphones. We do apologize for the many inadequacies that are of, like, happening right now. While he's listening to you talk. Yeah. Or like a person. And that's actually that's why I have a pop filter when I do my recordings at home. <laughs> or a, like what? Because they... this microphone's really almost right to my face. It's actually really sensitive. Is it? Uh, like oh yeah. Microphone is, really is it? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but a DIY pop filter is like a sock. Yeah, dude, a sock. Make what, sure it's clean. What kind? <laughs> cotton is nylon fine, or does it have to be cotton? <laughs> a sock. A sock. A Doesn't sock. Doesn't matter. It's a sock, dude. It's, it's, it mean, needs like, to have that you know grid effect. So it, it could be to... a stocking. It just has to be like mesh. Okay. Yes. But let's leave it at that. Uh, that's pretty much it. It should not be like a weird canvas thing that has no pores. Plus, if you have those socks, why do you have those socks? Which one? Sockings? Although theoretically, like, no holes on something would work as a pop filter, but it would also, like, block the mic. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, actually, just for checking how like uh, sensitive this mic was, I was actually shaking it around. I actually see the wave moving up and down on yeah, the audacity. Yeah. Like, hey, this is so cool. Then if you put your headset on, unless you just hear that which <laughs> going through the air. And Paolo is replicating a dog swimming in the water. Now he's replicating a dog. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, so how come? So yeah, why don't you tell us why did we have this sudden recording? Uh, because my teacher didn't show up. <laughs> Your teacher didn't show up, and I was excused. And I was excused from my. Well, no, I was excused. This this little tiny assignment I was given was treated as my final exam. Yeah. So like, my teacher didn't show up for last period, yeah. and um, because like I put my phone on airplane mode when I'm in class, mm -hmm. uh, like I didn't get the text from our class rep that. Like, there is no class for last period. So, like, at 7.45, take my phone off of airplane mode. We don't have class today. Like, what? <laughs> right, I'm texting the boys. Guys, guys, guys. You know, there is a silent mode on your phone. Yeah, I, I put it on airplane mode because I record. Oh, okay. I, I record my teacher. And um, if somebody texts me or whatever, there's the buzz and save battery, blah, blah, blah. Ah, oh, okay. okay. Makes sense. Because reception in the building is terrible. Is it like as bad as Paolo's place? Not that bad. <laughs> but like, like, like reception. Please, if is... I go outside your door, it's like I cannot call him. Outside or inside? <laughs> outside your door. 
I would not be inside your door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was, I'd be scary. It's like apparently. Really? Um, no. If you. <laughs> if. Uh, like, a, a good way to kill your battery is be in a place that doesn't have very good reception. Because your phone has to work harder to get that signal. Now, a good way to lose your power? Fall asleep while listening to a podcast and just keeps go- going to the next th- next video, next one, and next one. It kills it in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what happened to my iPad mini last night. So, I was watching this video, and you know how YouTube just starts playing the next video yeah, over and yeah, over? exactly. I had 100% of my iPad. Woke up in the morning, it's like zero. Like, what happened? The last <laughs> memory I had was... I forgot what Let's Play. It was uh, the new Five Nights at Freddy 3. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. It was using that I just can't pass out and take a wake up. Why is it dead? <laughs> <laughs> what happened last night? Yeah. That happened with me and um, extra credits. I was watching I-, I watched one video, fell asleep, and the next day like pretty much everything on their channel was marked as watched on YouTube. Really? <laughs> it just like kept on going. Like the energizer bunny. Uh- could have happened that, to me. So is that still in irrelevant now? The Energizer Bunny? Is that still a thing? Uh, I've not seen any commercials <laughs> about it in the longest time. I know that <laughs> Energizer also makes chargers now. They always did. Yeah. I'm actually more surprised they made flashlights, like headlamps. I don't know what I'm Energizer is. I, I don't know what Energizer I'm waiting for like the Energizer like a uh, battery pack for the phone. Keep huh. your phone going and going and going. <laughs> What's it? Um, that, that's that's the thing with like mobile phones, right? Do they make with, like cell phones and stuff? The, like the, the technology is getting so much better, but batteries still suck. Yeah, they still suck. Actually, that's what they say. The next major like invention that'll get someone rich is the better battery. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, a far better way to either store energy or recharge. I mean, like one thing people what? are doing is like remember that smart table and things to keep your device charged on the fly. Right. Right. I mean, there it is. Mean if we wireless? can't improve the battery, we'll improve methods of charging. So, like, yeah. like wireless charging and whatnot. Yeah. Like those, pa- like those jeans you could buy that ha- you, that wire that charge your phone wirelessly. I've never heard of this thing, um, but yes. Yes, I yes. So, someone invented pants that will charge your phone wirelessly. Whack band. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's also a higher way to impotence. There's all. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I want electricity like, going through my pants like that. Well, there's all. So what happens with rains? Well, <laughs> well, there's also a smart. No, it becomes an electric eel. <laughs> well, there's also a smart watch that actually that actually reacts whenever you do well an action I can't describe. No, you can describe it. You just can't. I mean, whoa. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if Zhao knows about this, but I'm pretty sure we can't talk about it here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, the I can't describe it's essentially that. I just that's how they've been trying to fix the battery issues. Wireless. You know, it's like everyone. I guess with I guess analogy for this is uh, water bottles. Everyone owns a 500 ml water bottle, and yeah. no one can figure out how to make a better or bigger, more compact bottle. So instead of doing that, they're thinking we'll put refill stations in every possible place, so you're always topped off. Right. Another yeah, thing yeah. they're also working on is like faster charging. Again, it's just ways to keep you topped off a lot faster. I mean, even faster lots of the chargers are now stating high speed, high speed, so high, high speed, speed, high so, speed. So either faster or Which more Which actually conven- messes up your battery pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it does. Yes, yeah, It's either faster or more convenient. So, so we've hit, like, the, the, the theoretical limit. Or we've hit the limit, the, the physical limit of battery technology. For now. For now. Because, like, um... Uh... What's it like? Like when you look at um, when you look at microchips, right? We are approaching literally the fastest that uh, single. What's it called when um, when a, when a chip goes? Revolutions. Yeah, the, the revolution. The cycle. Thing? Yeah, Cycles. cycle. The fastest that you can get a single cycle. From single clock cycle. Yeah, single clock cycle maxes out physically at around three point something. Three point something. Right. So like. Gigahertz. Yeah, or some other measure. Gigahertz, right? Okay. Um, so, like, what? Uh, so, so what? Guys like Intel are doing, right? Is you have more than one core. More that than way one. You have more than one 
clock cycle. Not yeah. just m not just more than one core, but also like making the core create more th like more threads. Yeah, For yeah. each core, there's like two threads. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so like microchip manufacturers have um, found hacky ways around the physical limitations of silicon. Uh, the microchip. So nothing's m nothing okay. much is going. How does so, that work? I mean, because like, um, you know, the you, you you get one clock cycle at three point whatever, and uh, it it doesn't get any faster than that. Yeah. So in order to get something quote faster, you get two cores. Oh and yeah. You shove them into one chip, so it is sort of faster, but. And that's how the V8 and V12 engine was born. Right. <laughs> so how like, do we make this faster? Put more. So how do we apply that to batteries? Well, I think there's another way of looking at that. Uh, before we even think about how to add more batteries and something make it bigger, uh, I remember when computer started out was an analog thing with vacuum tubes. It was we hit the limitation of what we could do with the vacuum tube for processing for processing analog data. What mm -hmm. did we do? We didn't improve it. We got new technology. Actually. The microchip came out. But the, so even though we're hitting the limit of what the microchip can do I feel that will just mean people will find a new means of processing data that's what Intel's trying to do right now because I hear that they're trying to move to I say they're using a monkey brain somehow like they're trying to move into <laughs> like a, se a 7 nanometer production cycle and their plan there is to replace I think it was to replace silicon with something else I think graphene? monkey brains I think graphene I forgot something oh. like that okay yeah, but yeah, they, they mean lots. This graphene monkey brain. <laughs> <laughs> I think. But I mean, that even was a concept of actually using a biological computer. Oh yeah, that sounds really cool. So, like, plug it into myself. Uh, in a sense, essentially, they're looking at the brain or something, or a new, or a literal neural system to process data even faster because the limits of that one are so, can't be peaked even by us at times. So we yeah, yeah. are closer to USB butt plugs. <laughs> uh, we're not going down that. We're not going down that road. <laughs> but yeah, we're not uh, going into that <laughs> rabbit hole. <Sorry. laughs> um, it's because it's a hole that keeps on going and going and going, <laughs> like and the eventually energizer. comes out of the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the that is one thing we look at was a biological computer, or even the other ones we've been looking at the so-called quantum computers. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, quant. Uh, quantum technology. Like, you think you really, understand it? Nobody really knows don't. what it feeds, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, what was it? Um, the best description of, 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 of quantum technology that I've heard was you have this guy sitting down and another guy with a gun to his head. And every time that the guy shoots him, like, there is no bullet that comes out. Like Russian roulette style. Yeah. And there is no bullet that comes out. How is that possible? Because somewhere in another universe, <laughs> like the guy died. You know. right. Oh, that, quantum, and that goes uh, on infinitely. Yeah, in, in, ad infin infinitum. Yeah. Essentially, so, when you look at quantum mechanics, uh, as someone will tell you, if someone says they understand it, they're lying to you. Uh, they don't really understand a thing. I mean, the closer I understood the quantum mechanics when it came to molecular structure, yeah, was looking at how the rules of physics change when things get smaller. Yeah. Well, basically, like quantum. Stuff. Magic. It's it's like really science small, magic, right? Like stuff. Well, how's it? It's it's like it's like how stuff behaves when it's really 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 small. Yeah, and at the molecular it, scale, because even the concept there was, do colors exist at the molecular level? Because like how pro we colors lost are. <laughs> 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 Yeah, did we introduce ourselves? Hey! <laughs> a little late, but hey guys, I'm the Aroyan Gamer. I'm Joe. I'm Brain Dead Saxo. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never. It would have been never if if, if, uh, if uh, Jao never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're 20 minutes in. <laughs> if you don't know who we are, we are yet, please watch our other shows. They are far more amusing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I actually really like the show though, like Bodega Nights. Oh, Bodega Nights is fun. It's, like, it's my favorite show. But it, it, it's the show that, um, it's the podcast that I feel that I can let other people listen to. Because oh. like Third World Linux and Third World Gaming are hyper specific. Oh yeah, So if is. people ask me like, oh, what do you, 
do with the whole podcast thing. I'm like, oh, check out Bodega Nights. Right? Because at least they sort of... At least we cover an entire... Everything. Gamut. Like, yeah. A little bit of everything. <laughs> we yes. just talked about science. Yep. Yes. Actually, there's even the... Uh, actually, I'm curious, though, about people going into the whole, like, neuro... Like, a biological computer or the so-called quantum hard drives and blah, blah, blah. Because of the... Have you noticed that the... Sorry, I'm going to do a little gaming here. They're actually surprisingly pushing VR gaming and immersive gaming versus uh, AR? using AR. Which is surprising me because everyone's, AR is a far cheaper. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's coming out with a VR headset now. <laughs> Not just a VR headset. I mean, the track, that weird... Like a well, not just VR heads. Like VR, yeah, yeah. VR and IR technologies are being like really pushed hard. Like, yeah, the treadmills, the Arr! motion sensors. Arr! There's even like weird rumors <laughs> that Half Life Three will be a VR game. I've been here. And this is surprising, just because have Oculus support. Yeah, but the thing about the uh, is or about what, this or is Steam VR support. What people don't realize is Oculus and stuff. These are paraphernalia. They're not. Like they're not games they're not con- consoles they're not systems by themselves yes yeah, yeah. it's like getting the power glove except it'll probably work <laughs> yes <laughs> who is it no, no 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 let's be specific it's like the virtual boy the only no no we don't speak works. of the virtual boy ah. <laughs> like, although Microsoft is coming up with like an AR thing uh, no like, everyone is even uh, Mac has so I think Samsung's looking into that for some stuff because yeah, yeah, it is a yeah. cheap way to set up because you don't need to invest so much hardware because you have the hardware, which is your phone. Yeah, but then like Microsoft is coming up with like a legit AR platform. Like what? Like oh, how... like like it, it, oh, it's... was it that weird thing? I s- I think I saw like that weird teaser they had. <laughs> yeah. They even show off Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, like, uh, because Microsoft is actually doing something that people aren't doing. Like they're not the market leader. Oh, they're not. And that forces them to be um, creative though, in, in that space, hmm. right? Though I am kind of wondering, though, the I mean, the biggest issue of AR technology, which I even stated on that old episode of TWG, you guys should check it out, uh, <laughs> is it is heavily dependent on your bandwidth and your computer speed and your net yeah. speeds because you cannot keep all this data in your device. If you do, that's uh, you're distressing your device. Um. That's where we bring in biological computing. Oh yeah. Because um, what's it? The uh, if 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 it's raw if it's raw storage that we're talking about, what's the latest development? Like using DNA. Yeah, using, like using DNA. DNA as storage. And it's actually it's actually possible. They've tried it. They've done it. It's just ridiculously expensive at this time. At this time. <laughs> USB butt plugs. That's not how it works, Paolo. I want it's not to how work it works. That way. <laughs> This this podcast just got really dark. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, interesting the way they're going. And but I guess I mean there's even one thing they talked about was if will it hit the point that we'll be so immersed into a possible virtual world because of like uh, the way we interact with social media, each other. I mean, I remember growing up where you literally talk to people, call them, hung out. The use of phones was really limited to you know, being a phone. So, yeah. do you think we'll yeah. hit the point with the biological computer, the virtual reality, the augmented reality, and all these things where we just can never disconnect? Uh, disconnect in what sense? Because I would argue that now we can't, like, like now as it stands, um, we can, we, we can, but it's like tough to disconnect. Right? It's tough to completely disconnect. I guess maybe in this, I guess when I say disconnect, I mean, you know how we have like the outdoorsy people. Or the mountain men who really like uh, stay away from technology in a sense. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it disconnect the point that it's now this not he's the guy with his own little lifestyle. It's now he's the weird one out. Like he's almost outcasted. Like why don't you? Why aren't you like us? Why That's do you dissuade sort of it? That's how it is it? now, dude. Like if you have somebody that lives out in the lives out in a cabin in the middle of wherever, like that person is kind of weird and absolutely outcast by choice. Mm. Okay, I didn't know we hit that point. I mean, I still enjoy being in the outdoors. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, me too. Like, every now and then, it's nice to have the phone off, blah, blah, blah. But, like, those tinfoil body armor people. Oh, yeah. That, it's all it. <laughs> like, I mean, it surprised me that Mount Everest is 3G. It has 3G all over it. Really? Well, yeah, Mount Everest is 3G. That's why people can tweak their ascent. Well, 
then tweet if they're you know in trouble. Then well, have a that, selfie right before they pass. That actually makes um, <laughs> that's actually really good though. Like, send just, help, why, Snapchat. <laughs> why are you just reminding me that some like at least a few months ago somebody made the world record for like. The, the longest tweet is 104 characters. No, 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 characters. the world, no, <laughs> world's highest terrestrial land party recently. Wait, like, what, what? Highest, so, okay, like world, highest land party in like, the world? Well, yeah, well, highest land party in Answer the world. Answer them. <laughs> no, 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 ah, well, actually, terrest- like, ter- highest in uh, altitude. Okay, like, where? Bunch of tech, bunch of tech people got up to a mountain somewhere in Col- Colorado. The, okay. highest peak in, the highest peak in Colorado, and then they basically played Doom. It was, a, and they basically played I'm pre- Doom. You know, I other. I disagree that they had the highest land party. I'd like to think that how the Korean Airlines planes are. They had the highest land party, being in terrestrial, out, terrestrial, oh, terrestrial, okay. terrestrial, terrestrial land party. Like they had to bring up all the equipment down to like the router and whatnot. I can just imagine like a whole bunch of guys like carrying their CPU. <laughs> oh, get away from me, you console peasants! They were play- they were playing on laptops. I must conquer the world. They were playing they were playing on laptops. So that was also because Asus was sponsoring this thing. Though I have to say though, at that height, I'm pretty sure they didn't have heating issues anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so they could overclock their G their G fifty. 50- 551 laptops as much as they want to. Now you see the instructions. You must play in high mode. Why? Any lower and the system may freeze. <laughs> yes. Y- yes. You need to do that to keep it warm. Yes. And they left right before it started snowing all over the stuff. So what did they play? Doom. Good choice. Doom 2. Like, or, you know, it would be also a really, really horrible choice if they suddenly, you know, went bad. <laughs> Oh god, so what did you play? Oh, we played that game oh, where yeah, you try to called... survive in the mountains. <laughs> Good god. <Life. laughs> what game did you play? Life. What did you play? We played... Bejeweled. I think one of the... I think one of the... Yeah, I think one of the... <laughs> I think I recall one of them almost died. I think died. there was. Remember in like PlayStation, they had like a weird bejeweled type game that you actually could play. Yeah, yeah. They had columns in oh. Sega, which was basically like... Tetris with ma- with magical gem thingies. Have you played not Tetris? Not Tetris. Not yet. Tetris with physics. What? What? Dude, you should check it out. Okay. Not Is that the Flash thing? So can I run it then? Uh, Is that a weird Linux thing? Is there a it's, penguin? It's cross platform. Oh, cool. Browser and or not? Free. Uh, you have oh. to download them. Okay. okay. Download, yeah. But not Tetris. Yeah, not Tetris. By this group called Stab Yourself. <laughs> Were they not Russian? But that's so curious. Like, I, I'm curious how the physics engine works there. So, if things are like te- about to teeter off, they can fall. Right, here's here's um, th- 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 this makes for great uh, radio, right? Like when you when you uh, hit switch or whatever, it goes like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you tap it, it just goes. So what's happening here is Zhao is moving something in slow motion. Yeah, yes. so instead of going boom, it goes boom. Oh. If you guys could see this, it would make so much more sense. <laughs> so is that the perfect... Binaural technology. <laughs> so is that the perfect way to like mess you up? Well, I'm guessing like the times are going to be really off. I mean, the reason how some of the people got really absurd scores there was they could move it so quickly. I mean, the top scorer for Tetris, the pieces were moving so quickly, you realistically shouldn't be able to understand where they're going. But he did. We're not sure why, we're not sure how. I mean, I watched the gameplay, and I didn't understand it either. So, did it feel... He was just Japanese, so I had to accept it must have been real. Oh, there was this Japanese Tetris game that's like... That everybody uses for competitive play. Yeah. And there was this one American guy, like the first guy that got Grandmaster or whatever. Did you guys see that video? No. Was he like Caucasian American or something? Yeah, like yeah, Asian yeah. American? Caucasian. Like wow. The first white dude wow. or something to get the, the rank of Grandmaster. Like apparently, um, it ends on a kill screen. Right? Hmm. And um, it, it, well, not a kill. Yeah. You, you see the credits. Yeah. The credits are rolling. And it's sort of like a kill screen in that. Um, the pieces are still falling, but you can't see them. Ah. Like, ah, so it went point. past, uh, was it 64, 64, 1, 2, 8? Uh, it, it went past stage, that's stage 256, I'm guessing. I'm not sure if 
like the kill screen is because of a technical limitation. Or it's Batman, just like, that's how it worked. Was it was a yeah, physical it was limitation. like a physical limitation. But I think it was just like super hard mode. Wow. And so so you're pretty much playing Tetris without seeing the bricks. Really. And you're supposed to get through that with like to to the end of the credits. So that's your time limit. Really. And once the credits are how long was the credits? Uh, like a minute or something, two minutes or whatever. Oh, okay. But like that's you imagine they outsourced hard. everything to like so much different people. Like these guys handled this one sound effect. <laughs> these guys handled one sound effect. This guy designed this section of the. Really? <laughs> He's like just not showing everyone, even the custodians. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude. And like once you're done with that, you get like the rank of super grand master or whatever it is. And like. In the internet, you become a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Like, as much as I love Tetris, and I'd, I'd like to think that I'm fairly good at that game, like, I'm never going to get to that level. To that to that point where, like, I can imagine it, you know? Anyway, moving on. Okay. Well, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, like, uh, I enjoy games, but, I mean, like, the only time I ever put something to an absurd level of mastery was in the, well, the Counter-Strike games, so I bring up a lot. I realized I hit a really strange point in my life when I could dodge the bullets because I understood where they were going to come out from. Uh, it was weird like uh, there's a stage there called uh, Cobble yeah and uh, it's like a big like uh, it's a big castle looking thing I think well, I, I remember that stage there was a guy who jumped in who ra who appeared in front of me with the uh, 5.1 which is the M249 mini me the saw okay yeah I knew the pattern by heart to where the bullets go when you would start firing so I actually started so I actually avoided out of the 50 bullets he shot at me about 50 bullets I avoided about 45 of them okay. and stabbed him okay. with the knife and I had a gun I just figured no I'm just gonna stab you when it hit that point I realized I better stop playing uh, <laughs> I uh, see the bullets I have become the one <laughs> you become Neo and you and everything is awesome <laughs> and you forgot and apparently you didn't you weren't a gentleman well, what mean? I, I stabbed him with a knife and just right in his face. I mean, I was that was pretty gentlemanly. Really? Itself. Yeah, I mean, when you bring out a knife, the proper decor is the other guy brings out a knife. <laughs> did he bring out the knife or did he just stick with his Oh, gun? he panicked with the M249 <laughs> and wondered why didn't I die. <laughs> and like, he's like calling, that must be ha like hacks, hacks. No, I just play for a really long time. <laughs> did it feel like you had an obsession? No, no, I mean, I never thought I was obsessed until, I'm guessing, you know, this is a time before, like, you had Steam or things count how much hours you played on something. <coughs> I'm honestly so scared to see what would have been my hours played on Counter-Strike. Because I know... But you uh, lost that Steam account, if I'm correct. Hmm? You lost that Steam account? No, no, because I played Counter prior Steam also. Oh, okay. And I would easily log in about, <laughs> like... Oh, young Padua. <laughs> like, there was a time, time before. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> oh, there was a time oh, before YouTube? <laughs> yes, there was a time before what everything. We, actually, yeah, before YouTube, what did we do? It's like E-Bombs World, Newgrounds. What, what did we go to? Uh, weird College humor. servers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, people realize, you know, the days before YouTube. There that was, was a, a weird the, time. There was a day. But I still had so much fun. I mean, with yes. Newgrounds, College Humor, yeah, E-Bombs yeah. World. I go, I just go to random websites and enjoy everything I'm seeing. I had sensory overload at that time. How did we find these places? Um, I didn't even, I, no idea. I didn't even Link. use... Links. Um, Links. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't even have an email until 2006. Oh, young pad one. Yes, there I was am. a time before emails. Yeah, I found most of my websites by looking at the related, like you know, the you know websites would post links of other websites, uh, like because I still of remember similar how the topics original and Google whatnot. Page looked. <laughs> I did. I I always went to those to find new stuff. Um, Sorry. What was it? Uh, before Yahoo was like an actual search engine. Yeah. That was the way to do it because Yahoo. The difference between Yahoo and Google back in the day was Google um, cataloged the web by crawling it or whatever. While Yahoo, um, like people would submit uh, sites for listing in Yahoo. Oh, okay. So Yahoo was a lot more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, wall gardeny. Uh, 
no, curated. Curated. Okay. Yeah, Yahoo is more curated. And um, they had him in. Remember how they had him in like they had categories. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yahoo had categories for the websites, so that's how you find websites back in the day. Hey, I'm, oh my gosh, Yahoo. Actually, for this one, I was online. I used Alta Vista a lot more than I used Yahoo. Alta Vista. Is that still live? Alta Vista. I have no idea. I'm gonna ask Jeeves still live. Yes. <laughs> well, it's it's ask.com. Like they rebranded it. I like Jeeves, not the butler. Uh, and like yeah, he goes, yeah. I'm checking for it, sir. Here are your things. <laughs> I am going to check if Alta Vista is still alive. Uh, actually, so for that. <laughs> we have Come the on. culmination of the world's knowledge at our fingertips. Uh, what do you use it for? Uh, you know, cat pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and dresses. Oh god, that thing there. And so, you know, uh, even though it's going to be a little cliche, so what did you see? But before before we get into <laughs> something I didn't care about at all, yeah. <laughs> but, but before we get to that, I almost searched DuckDuckGo for Alta Vista. Almost. Why you do you say almost? Because I realized that I can just go to altavista.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yahoo bought Alta Vista. Oh, okay. Oh. So now when you go to altavista.com, it redirects to a Yahoo search page. Ah. Uh. Come back here, you are not running away. <laughs> uh, oh, talking about it? Google and Yahoo and things, net neutrality. Oh, yeah. let's not get into this. <laughs> uh, that, well, uh, to say that, I'll just say that's an, in, that's an interesting topic. Nothing more than that. Yes. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> I don't see why net neutrality, I don't see an argument against the idea of net neutrality. Hmm. Right? My, I don't have, a, I don't have qualms with net neutrality for as long as it does as it isn't an opening for for weird for other weird stuff to happen after it but like, like how much weirder can it honestly get i mean <laughs> like like paulo's referring to government regulation oh okay like, government uh, regulation not like excessive government regulation yeah well i mean that was a plan back in the early 80s when the net was young and you know it was strange yeah. and people thought no one would ever use it except educated <laughs> Huh. Then, um, <laughs> then, like, uh, we're going to be talking about this on Third World Linux and how it applies to, like, Us? the Philippines. Okay. But, like, might as well, like, get the ball rolling. Here. Teaser. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I know that, Paolo, you will disagree with me wholeheartedly on this. Yeah. I would rather have, um, I would rather have government mandate that the ISPs have to treat all information on the internet as um, equal as opposed to letting our ISPs do that have control over the over, information over the information yeah I would rather have an entity that is at least theoretically accountable to the people what about yeah but then what about everything so essentially else? the public versus the private yeah yeah, um, well, but like, what? ideally, ideally, the way it should work is that, is that the private sector, through competition, etc., like 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 pure beautiful capitalism. That's not here, right? Yeah. Competition brings prices down for better service. Yeah. However, we are stuck with an oligopoly. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. it is so cost prohibitive for any little company to come up and say, "I am going to offer." better speeds at a lower price yeah therefore the two three ISPs that we have in the Philippines and the US the yeah. two or three ISPs that you have in the US have free reign to do whatever they want because the consumer has no choice mm -hmm. now what do we as the consumers do do we um, do we all decide to go off the grid that's eh, not going to happen. That's at totally all. not going to happen. Not going to happen. What is, so, 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 what is our recourse at that point? Do we go and start picketing um, PLDT? They're not going to listen to us because they are not at all um, accountable to us. Oh yeah, they're not. Because okay. corporations have no souls, okay. and all they really give a crap about is profit. They're That's still what a legal they are. Entity. That's what they are as a uh, as a juridical entity. They have no memory. They have no conscience, they have no souls, but they have a legal personality whose function in society is to make money. Yeah. Right? So, um, if we go there and say, oh, can you please be, like, nice and um, 
give Channel 14 the same treatment that you give Facebook because of net neutrality. Like, like if we go, if we go to Globe and be like, "Hey, Globe, um, please uh, allow Channel 14 content to be unlimited for 99 pesos a month," they'd be like, "Well." We don't have a nice contract with you in the same way that we have a nice contract with Facebook. So unfortunately, you, Channel14.com, are stuck being part of that three gigabytes that you have to pay a thousand bucks a month for, whereas you get unlimited access to Facebook for 99 pesos. Okay. Right? Real to that is what happens. Right? That is what happens if you let government, um, if you let... Private entities. If you let private entities. Right? Without any sort of meaningful competition from potential uh, little upstarts to run the show. Okay. Well, so though, what's our recourse, right? We have to classify uh, we have to classify internet access as um, in our case uh, we have no we don't have title to we don't have an applicable common carrier law because common carriers here refer specifically to like boats and stuff. <laughs> ah, right. Wait, wait, wait. We don't have that even for our te- for our telephones. Right. Our telephones are classified as public utilities. But the, but, that would be true. but there's no equi- but there's no equivalent that we could put that on internet. Right now, um, do we we could classify the internet as a public utility. Right now, we have no actual legislation on what the internet is. The closest we can come up with is it's a value added service. Yeah. Okay. So as a value added service, that pretty much means that the ISPs can do whatever they want with it. That's true. Okay. Right. Now, if it's a, now if we classify it as a public utility, the government gets more control, but everybody but. must have a connection to the internet in the same way that everybody must have a connection to the landline. Okay. Actually, think enough. We actually talked about this in Interworld uh, Gaming about the cafe culture, whereas the Philippines, you have the most connected society that has also least that doesn't actually own any real computer. Yeah. I'm sorry for the rant. <laughs> No, no, no. No, I mean, no, it's no, it's like fine. A... Actually, <laughs> funnily enough, my issue was never with net neutrality. It was with it, mostly with input, impl- like the implementation, it, implementation, yeah, and yeah. the fact that a lot of the document used, uh, like, like one, like the working document is long and unreleased to the public. That 322 page thing that Obama 332 that... that was reduced to 317 because Google called in a week after. Right. Um... Now, I'm not sure how it works in the American legal system, yeah. but here in the Philippines, if we have an implementing rule, if we have, if we, if we have an IRR, yeah. it has to be published before it has any force. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, we don't, so we don't have... So the what, public do have so a are you saying, it's being worked on. <laughs> so, are, yeah. so you're saying we, we don't have risk of those shenanigans? Uh, are you saying that? Um, I guess, because... I mean, I'm not sure what that document was because, because we don't have an analog to the FCC. Yeah, and well, to be, yeah. well, yeah, that's look. Just to <laughs> just to clarify my position on net neutrality, I've been following this since that regu- since that uh, ruling by the Supreme Court last Which year. Which ruling by the Supreme Court? The last one year? that struck down the the previous net neutrality rules. Which, Which one? one? That was back in March, I think. Because Which we have to go year? all the way back to 2010. Because yeah. 2010 was when the Supreme Court of the U.S. said the FCC has no jurisdiction. I, mm, I, re- I recall that the, the jurisdiction... Oh, right, it was 2010. It's just I, w- I was reading on the stuff as, as early as last year, and I was, okay, okay. Monor- I was monitoring the way things turned around. And to be fair, it's like, that's why I've had this weird position where... Net neutrality is something I support, but it has to be done in well, in a way that works. Basically, it has to be done in a way that doesn't open any more cans of worms than than what needs to be opened. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any other weight weight control. That uh, I guess one way. I mean, when I saw net neutrality, when it came to and then talk talk about ISPs as gatekeepers deciding whether what you can access and how fast and all these things, and when it came to government actually managing it all. Well, I see it from different point of views. One, the government could actually make this work well. However, that's assuming the government itself is very well founded and the ideas put in place actually make sense. Mm. When it comes to the Philippine government, uh, we generally don't see such. Yeah. However, when it comes to the private sector here, because of how our laws and things are set up, it's hard for any small player to come in 
thus causing the catalyst system to actually fail. So, you know, we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Okay. Right, yeah. But uh, I would, as much as I don't trust the government here to handle those things, I trust them far more than Smart and Globe to handle it simply because <laughs> it's been shown that Smart and Globe are more interested in doing the Smart Globe appeal well, like, to the other side. I need money. They're and more interested in their own that, interests. I mean, it's the same thing like, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to move to another IP, ISP? Oh, who are you going to go to? <laughs> Isn't, I also recall reading that. Who that, are you go to? that PLDT owns all the core inf infrastructure and it, they basically agreed with the other ISPs for that. I recall reading somewhere that all that all the core all the core infrastructure is basically owned by them and they're bas they basically have this scheme together. Uh, I'm not uh, sure. Is that a I'm conspiracy sure. theory? No, no I mean the ones who have the most infrastructure is actually smart. Well, owned by PLDT. Yeah, so it's like I recall reading that the core infrastructure was, was owned like by one. Mm. There was Islacom, which is bought by Globe, and Islacom has like a fairly robust network in Cebu. Yeah, but then like I'm sure they have interconnectivity agreements and stuff. Yeah, because that's sort of how it's supposed to be in a net neutral world. Okay, well, and yeah. the reason they are interconnected is because it is mandated by law that everybody has a landline and they should be able to get in touch with each other. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> what's the last time you used a landline uh, that was not work related? Uh, huh. Good question. <laughs> Can you actually still get dial up? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why you would, but yes, you can get dial up. Yeah, I wouldn't want uh, to. Actually, but I my just want to know. actually, I think the brothers up in uh, near Slob, like the uh, monk, uh, they're not the wait, not the monks. They're like uh, they're not numerities also. They're just missionaries. They're not missionaries either, but. There's the something. Brothers. Yeah, the brothers. What, a lame, they a, a have lame ministry a or something. They had like a modem. Okay. And gosh, when I was there, like we were saying, it was such a weird feeling when I suddenly heard that. Dee, 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 like, oh my, like, I got time for it. I thought it was like a ringtone. It's like, oh my god, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> it still exists. You were brought back in time. No, no I was kind of freaked out. I'm like, wow, how far back are you guys? <laughs> okay. But yeah, I was actually surprised. It's about that four you... hours south. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, apparently they still have a dial-up modem. And that doesn't count as meaningful competition. Yeah. This, this is why I lost faith in our mobile carriers. Um, and it, it's... Uh, you were talking about piracy earlier, and it connects to piracy. Um, I really don't think that people in the third world are um, averse to paying for media. No, no. I mean, you can see lots of people more than willing to pay for things they actually happily enjoy. Right? So if they can get it right now, um, this th this was um, like I've been having a problem with internet connection recently, like the past couple of days, right? Okay. Um, and I couldn't stream. Uh, I, I couldn't stream videos off of YouTube properly. So what I did was I downloaded the video, very illegal. Mm -hmm. But if I can't stream, then. And you can't. And I don't know why you can't, the YouTube thing doesn't load anymore. Like you couldn't leave it and let it load and come back to watch it anymore. Uh, to, to save bandwidth. I really hate it because that's what I used to do when you know my net was really really slow and bad. Was I'd pause it and just like come back to it later. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the bandwidth thing. It's like how YouTube saves bandwidth. Okay. Um, right. So, so I can't stream, right? Because my internet connection isn't reliable enough. So what am I gonna do? I gotta download it. Yeah. Right. Now, if my internet connection isn't reliable, what's the most reliable way to download something given that scenario? I'm going to torrent the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, um, that's why... Uh, that's why piracy is such a big thing here. Because it is still more convenient. To pirate. To pirate. Not right? the stream. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, yeah, again, goes to availability because... Like, uh, I guess I best saw this when Steam came in. Uh, same came in people started using it was people would actively buy you know original games original softwares because it became readily available and it made sense to do so before we just didn't really have the option to get certain things yeah, yeah. now now if Netflix all of a sudden came to the Philippines and, <laughs> we were and we were given the option to stream it right um, it would still be more convenient to pirate it off of the pirate bay because you're not going to be able to get you're going to end up with insane buffering, etc. Oh yeah, you'll be uh, watching it. You know, it'll take you three hours to watch a one half hour movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So, um, so there's that. Uh, now, this applies to our wired connections. The great hope 
was wireless. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Great Hope was 3G and LTE. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I understand that we don't have the same fiber optic infrastructure that was overbuilt in California during Actually, the dot-com boom. Not just that. I mean, <coughs> across the United States, they had fiber optic wires everywhere that Jenny went unused for so many years. Right? Because of like that, that dot-com boom in the 90s, right? Yeah. Like, I understand that we don't have that infrastructure here in the third world. So... <coughs> the way that we are supposed to get so 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 in order for us to be competitive with like the internet landscape of the rest of the world um, we have to rely on emergent technology that is like cell towers and stuff yeah so that was that was the great hope okay now I have a three gigabyte limit yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I was actually confused when I had my yeah, new you plan. Had, it's like, when, why is it getting really bad? Until they told me, oh, sir, you're ca- uh, we already capped it. And I, what do you, you mean you cap it? Right, I recall you mentioned that you had only, then they ca- then they mentioned that there's a cap to their <coughs> unlimited. No, the worst part is they didn't even inform me about the cap until I went to get my new line. Although, although, although I will, um, I will say that Globe, I think Globe is doing it right. In, in the sense that um, I, I have a... I pay this much to get like three gigabytes. Hmm. If I exceed that, I am charged per megabyte. Per megabyte, which is very net neutral. Mm. Okay. Because you know they, they don't slow you down once you hit yeah. the limit. You just have to pay extra. The price per megabyte isn't that isn't that the bad for you? The price per is it? megabyte is horrible. It okay. is. We're still the most expensive. But, okay, but <laughs> I thought but, that was bad. But once you hit an upper limit, yeah, it stops. They stop charging you, but don't kill your service. Ah, okay. Now, in the other side of smart, they will slow you down. Uh, so that, so that's why and I like, charge uh, you. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I like what Globe does, okay. because like they don't, uh, because they don't kill your service once you hit your upper limit. Okay. Um, and they don't charge you anything exorbitant at that point. Okay. So that's good. Okay. What frustrates me about them? are what they're now calling the lifestyle plans where for 99 bucks you get unlimited access to m.nba.com and for an extra 99 bucks you get um, unlimited use of uh, Viber, WeChat, blah blah blah. Yeah. blah, blah. Th- this is Globe we're yeah. talking about. Okay. <coughs> I seem to kind of wrap my head around and get only Facebook. I never understood what that meant. Um, it means that you're not charged because you're charged per you're, you're charged per kilobyte, per megabyte or whatever, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, it, uh, the, the only Facebook is if you're accessing m.facebook.com it doesn't count against any bandwidth limits that you have or you're not charged for it unless you click the links that go beyond it then of course you're yeah, charged yeah, okay. yeah. But, so, so essentially going through that status messages up, uh, uploading pictures videos or whatever into M Facebook does not count your bandwidth yeah, okay. yeah. Well, that's interesting that is um, like, like if we have any American listeners I'm sure you guys are abhorred <laughs> as to some of the terrible practices that go on in the third world. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the I mean, I I was at Michiko uh, Kokaku or something that the Japanese uh, the physicists physicist who actually even point out that the nice thing about third world countries, like similar to the Philippines, is uh, the fact that we did not adapt traditional technologies it makes us very open to adapt all the newer technologies and learn from older mistakes. Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> technical oligopoly. So technical. Yeah, we have virtual oligopoly. Virtual oligopoly, though one could actually argue it's a monopoly with contacts between uh, with other players. Well, that's the definition of oligopoly. Yeah. I don't know. I look at oligopoly <laughs> as actual players who just collude, collude to maintain that, to maintain, like, like three guys maintain control of everything. Rockefeller? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, yeah. The the, the, the one dude, I was the dude that owns um, PLDT. <laughs> um, the dude that owns Globe. Um, and the dude that owns Sky Cable. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the way We've I look got at everything. <laughs> actually, the way I look at it is like a monopoly. Is like I look at it. It's kind of like more like a monopoly because like the core infrastructure is being leased out to, to two guys. In that case, one guy owns the core infrastructure and the other guy is basically just like f- found a way to make a nice sounding agreement between the three of them. I'm, I'm not sure. 
So, so, so basically, I, I like, one guy's on top. Yeah, well, the thing is, I'm not sure who owns all of the infrastructure. I'm sure that they have their own infrastructure. They do, and they actually, last week, they actually can't talk to each other. That's okay. actually an issue that uh, Smart had when they brought in Sun Cellar, was lots of their equipment and hardware did not really talk well with their equipment. Okay. That's why it's only recently where you can have that setup where you have only call or text to Smart to Sun. Before okay. that, it didn't exist because it was a different setup altogether. Okay. The same way Sun had issues. I mean, Sun could access 3G, but had issues accessing Edge. Because Edge was also a really weird transitionary technology that Smart uh, got into. Okay. <laughs> which, I mean, honestly, it's a weird thing for them going to. I appreciate it because you got far more, like, you had far more chances to get internet over globe. It but it's just really, really, slow. Really, <laughs> really slow. I mean, like, uh, in the farm, you if you're smart, you always had Edge. Okay. And Globe, you might have 3G. But, might. you know, you might. Like one that, is will and the other is might. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, when you get the 3G for Globe, you can get, you can actually watch videos on YouTube. For Edge, you're happy to get mail. <laughs> yeah. Well, it going took... back to the piracy <laughs> thing, by the way. Yeah. Um, another reason I think that, like, we are more likely to pirate stuff is because we have to pay more per megabit. Actually, yeah, we do pay a lot. Right? Like, I told my brother how much uh, 20 megabit connection in the Philippines is, and um, he asked if I was joking. <laughs> yep. Uh, my 20 Mbps uh, uh, net speed will cost me about 5,500 pesos, which roughly translates to about... Oh, no, I told him how much the, the, the highest was. It's like 100,000 100, pesos, right? So, no, no, uh, 50,000. What? Uh, 20, oh, the 20,000 is yeah. the highest one you can get for the house. Yeah, there yeah. is a faster one that's business, yeah, like, but the fastest for house is about 20,000, which yeah. is yeah. a good bit of money. That's about $400. Exactly. I don't know <laughs> that that's how much it costs. He said, I get that much for like a 20th of the price. I, it's crazy. I mean, the, right now, I mean, I've been looking at my speed, which is 20. Okay. And I've been looking actually to upgrade to 50 for an extra 3,000 a month. But I'm kind of looking at it. This is insane. I know yep. people, I know my friends in Tokyo uh, spend what? A fraction? 3,000 pesos for a one gig connection. Right? A gigabit. Okay. Seriously, they get that. I get megabits. Right now, okay. <laughs> now we factor in how much that is in relation to the average person's annual income and what percentage your internet connection is of your take-home salary right so we have a much bigger percentage because we have smaller salaries and I mean the average like a uh, <coughs> the minimum wage here was about 7,000 uh, we're 340 pesos a day 340 pesos a day so, see, so yeah, about nine. So about nine thousand a month. Mm -hmm. So your internet cost would be at the decent one, be one third your salary, right? Mm. That's crazy. Yep. <laughs> You're paying a third of your salary, and that's just your internet. That's not including your phone or the other bills. Um, well, uh, yeah. Three, three thousand pesos will get you like nine megabits down, right? Eight nine megabits. No, that gets you three to five, depending if you're on DSL. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no. Three three thousand. Oh yeah. Well. There. Yeah. Three it's, to five. Yeah, it's about three to five. Three five for it was three five for eight. It on fiber Either plans. Way. On fiber. Yeah. yeah. If you have the infrastructure for fiber. And but people don't have that, it's DSL. Yeah. And either way, that's like a third of the that's a third of the salary of your minimum wage worker. Yep. Not everybody here makes minimum wage. Nope. Those those, those guys at the pizza place across the street, I know for a fact make less than minimum wage. I asked them. Mm. <laughs> so I tipped them well. Uh, but yeah. So, you know, you, you, uh, you, you have a fairly large percentage of your salary going to your internet connection. There's no way I'm paying another 10 bucks for a, a collection of music, or for, for like a, for 12 songs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because, well, <coughs> your money's been eaten up. I mean, essentially the cost of that 20 Mbps connection I've been looking at, I mean 50 Mbps connection, yeah. is the price of the average person's salary per month. Yeah. And that is for 50, which for other countries, you no, know, 50 is what you can sometimes get from a coffee shop. Oh, speaking of coffee shops, shout out to Broad Cup. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for hosting, in a weird sense, many, many podcasts and discussions. <laughs> Did we? 
was this? This it's wasn't actually... our first, was it? No. Really? No. We, we've recorded here. Ja, ja, no, I mean recording here. No, it's not the first time. We've recorded here before. Um, you can convert this? I can neither confirm nor deny. 